News, where our news is extraordinary. Hello, I'm Bella. And I'm Eileen. And, and this is WASD News, news where our news, news is extraordinary. extraordinary. Today we have six fascinating stories for you. We have Piper on the subject of homework, Gavin on soccer, and Eileen on the subject of animal abuse. We also have um, Jeremiah on lightning, Jesse on sharks, and Bella on moonbows. Now let's get Let's go to our first story of the day on Piper on the subject of homework. Should schools ban homework? This decision is chosen by the governor. If no homework happens every school day, then kids would have time to do important activities. This would happen at schools, any schools around the world. When would this happen? This would happen when the governor agreed. Should kids be working four plus hours a day and come home to more? Work. Instead, I think they should come home to a nice sunny afternoon and play outside for a little. Parents who want to connect personally in meaningful ways with their children after a long day at their job would do well to remember that they have a right to family time interrupted by homework. At the end of the day, it's about how one wants to balance work, family, educational goals, and happiness. The governor would decide this. If you don't agree to this, here's a question. Do you really want to miss family time, important and fun activities? Coming home to a sunny afternoon is nice. You get more free time. People argue back and forth that children need between six to seven hours a day of fresh air and sunshine. I think that after school, kids should have two to four hour, hours of relaxed free time. Parents also need time to relax after a long day at work. Kids need their time at the end of the day, no matter what matters. That was an awesome story, Piper. Let's say I definitely agree with your opinion on homework. Yeah, Piper and Eileen, me too. Now, let's bounce on over to our next story with Gavin on soccer. Thank you, Bella. The World Cup is the most popular soccer tournament in the world. People from all over the world come to watch it. Uruguay and Argentina met in the championship game. One story claims that their first soccer game was held in eastern England. Those were just some of my facts about soccer. Did you know that soccer has been popular with the public since the 8th century? Queen Elizabeth demanded that soccer players in England should be imprisoned for one week. England first invented the game of soccer. King Edward III of England passed laws in 1331 to ban soccer. There's evidence from China, Japan, and Greece that soccer existed for 3,000 years. These are some facts on how soccer became a sport. The World Cup is the most popular soccer tournament in the world. People from all over the world come to watch it. The first World Cup began in July 1930. The World Cup is held in a different city every four years. Players play a bunch of games. If you win, you keep playing. If you lose, you're out. If you win all the games, you go to the World Cup. And if you win the World Cup, you win it all. Those were some cool facts about the World Cup. Did you like those cool facts? Those were all my facts about soccer. Did you like my story? Thanks for listening. Now back to you, Bella. It's pretty crazy that the soccer tournament is the most popular um, Bella, haven't you played soccer before? Yes, I have, and I see why people would like to watch it. Now, let's blast off with Bella and learn about nighttime rainbows, also known as moonbows. Thank you, Eileen. Imagine this, an archway across the dark star-speckled sky. Not just any arch, a multicolored one consisting of six colors, or a white one. This is not just your imagination. Reflected light from the moon, along with rain, and many other conditions, makes a lunar rainbow, or a moonbow. People travel all over the world to see these nighttime rainbows. Don also made a formula to find moonbows, and astrophotographer Giuseppe Petricca got a photo. Moonbows appear at night and can be seen all over the world, although there are places they appear more often. For example, Yosemite National Park, California, and Cumberland Falls, Kentucky. 
Moonbows are very rare. The main reason is that there are many necessities for a moonbow that not many places have. For a moonbow to appear, you need a low bright moon and some sort of water in the air, whether it be from rain or a nearby waterfall. Depending on how bright the moon is, moonbows may appear to be white. Sure, a moonbow sounds like it needs the same conditions as a normal daytime rainbow, but there are things you need to take account for with moonbows that you don't need with a normal rainbow, such as the sun needing to be at least 9 degrees below the horizon, a dark sky, and the moon phase full moon or waning. Like I said earlier, rain is a key part of a moonbow. This is because moonbows occur as the moonlight shines through the water droplets still floating in the air after the rain. The droplets act like prisms, scattering the sunlight in the visible spectrum we see as the rainbow. After this happens, the moonbow will tend to last seconds to minutes. I believe moonbows are fascinating, and it's great we get to learn about these nighttime rainbows. If you've never seen a moonbow, which not many people have, I suggest you go and see one. I have seen one, and it's stunning. I hope I've piqued your interest. Thank you for listening, and back to you, Eileen. That's super cool, Bella. I bet moonbows are super pretty in person. Thanks, Eileen. Yeah, they're really cool. Maybe you should try and go and see one sometime. Maybe I should. Okay, next let's uh, swim on over to Jesse and learn about sharks and shark attacks. Thanks, Eileen. How do you prevent a shark attack from happening to you? First, where are shark attacks happening? Here, I'll help you find out. In 2018 in July, Cape Cod saw its first fatal shark attack in more than 70 years. Whoa, that's a long time. Have you ever wondered why sharks attack people? Well, let's find out some information. Did you know that sharks only attack you if you really make them mad? If a, if you touch a shark, it's going to not like that at all, and will and it will try and make you lunch if you provoke it. I recommend you don't disturb sharks or do anything to make them mad. Also, have you ever wondered how sharks blend in with the water so well? Let's find out right now. Did you know that the gr- shark's grayish skin makes it so it can blend in with the seawater any time of the day? If you get attacked by a shark and you're panicking, it won't help your case. If a shark is thrashing at you, all you can do is prepare for impact or swim as fast as you can to land. But if the shark does get you, you might get hurt. But all you can do is hit the weak spots of the shark. Punch or kick its gills. Did you know that sharks are attracted to blood and shiny jewelry? So I recommend you don't wear jewelry in the water. I bet you didn't know that New England in 2004 when a 14-foot, 1,700-pound female great white shark got trapped in a Massachusetts salt pond. That's fascinating. Back to you, Eileen. Jesse, I didn't know sharks could camouflage. Yeah, Jesse, that is really cool. And now next, we have some quote-unquote flashing news with Jeremiah on lightning. Thank you, Bella. What would you do if you were to be struck by lightning? And have you ever wondered to yourself before who has been struck by lightning the most? Well, I can answer your question. It was Roy Cleveland. Roy Cleveland was a park ranger in Virginia, and he had been struck by lightning seven times and survived all of them. How does lightning strike? Did you know that lightning is made by atoms when multiple thunderclouds are above land? Positive atoms go to the ground, and negative atoms go to the bottom of the thundercloud. And when they try to group back up, they create lightning. It is most likely to strike near large objects like buildings, trees, and skyscrapers. Another question is, why does lightning strike? Well, I can answer your question. It's because all living things are made out of atoms. So when when there's atoms in the um, thunderclouds, the positive ones can go to the ground, and the negative ones can go to the bottom of the thundercloud. And when they try, So when they try to group back up, they create lightning. How are thunderclouds created? Well, I can answer your question. 
Water in the air can cool down and condense, and that means it can go from a gas to a liquid. Water can condense around particles like dust, so when millions of water dust droplets come together, they create thunderclouds. Next, onto one of the weirdest types of lightnings, the blue jet. The blue jet is a weird type of lightning that can rarely be seen above thunderclouds. It is blue because this type of lightning can excite nitrogen that makes it blue. The way scientists found this out is because they observed a flash over Australia. Well, this was all. This was my article all about lightning and thunder. On to you, Bella. Whoa, it's crazy that Roy Cleveland was struck by lightning seven times. They still have the hat as well. That's really cool. The lightning color from the top of the cloud being blue is also really interesting. Now for our last, but definitely not least, story, Eileen on the subject of animal abuse. Thank you, Bella. What's animal abuse, you might ask? Animal abuse is when you hurt or starve your pet. People mainly abuse dogs, cats, horses, and livestock. Why do people abuse animals? There's many reasons. Animal cruelty is like any other form of violence. It's cruel and not nice. Animal abuse started in the 12th century. That's a long time of abuse. If you abuse your dog, cat, horse, or livestock, they won't trust you. Many people bought their pet to work till they collapsed, or bought to hunt, or bought just to be starved for months and months, almost a year. When animal abuse started in the 12th century, the most abused animals were dogs. If you decide that you don't like your pet, think about how bad it would hurt them because animals deserve to be loved and cared for. Um, here are some facts about animal abuse. Every 60 seconds, one animal suffers abuse. Close to 65% of abused animals are dogs. Every year, 10 million, 10 million and up animals die from abuse. It's pretty crazy. If you decide that you don't like your pet dog, cat, horse, or livestock, don't, don't abuse it. Be some animals are going extinct, and some animals depend on us humans. For instance, pet dogs depend on us for food because we brought them into our home and we fed them. Uh, another form of abuse is animal testing. Animals in Asia are the most abused animals in the world, from bears being captured in cage for the bile, and dogs and cats being slaughtered for their meat. This is pretty sad. Let's try to stop animal abuse whenever possible. Back to you, Bella. Well, Eileen, it's said that one animal gets abused every 60 seconds. Yeah, Bella, I believe we should stop animal abuse whenever um, possible. As I said earlier, that was our last story of the day. Thanks, Thanks for, for tuning, tuning in, in for, for the, the WASD WASD newscast. newscast. Have, Have a great day. day. This is WLES News. Hi, welcome to WLES. I'm Paige. And I'm Angela. Today we have Tony with water pollution, Jacob with motocross, and Angela with money savings. We also have Larry with Minecraft, Brody with Kobe Bryant, and Paige with frogs. Now to start us off, we are swimming to Tony with water pollution. Thank you, Paige. Have you seen a lot of trash on the beach? Then you thought, wow, there's a lot of trash. If only I could do something and also wondering who would do it and how it is it becoming worse and worse. Well today, I'm gonna to answer all those questions for you. But first, let's focus on how it is created. Ocean pollution is made by a combination of, of chemicals and trash, most of which comes from land and sources and is washed or blown into the ocean. This pollution results in damage to the environment, to the health of all organisms, and to economic structures worldwide. For example, fishermen will fish with nets in the salt water, and sometimes they will lose their nets in the ocean. Other fishermen sometimes have fishing lines snap or break, which get left behind in the water, making the line, the fishing line, polluted to the lake. These are just some examples of how the ocean gets polluted. Now, let's talk about Boyan Slad, a 25-year-old Dutch whose dream job was to become an aerospace engineer, but changed his mind and decided to clean the ocean. Ever since Boyan Slat was a teen, he wanted to clean the ocean. He wanted to make an eco-friendly system that wouldn't hurt the fish. So he made a U-shaped system with two strings attached to a parachute that connected back to the other string. He called it System 001, but the problem was that he couldn't keep track of it.
So he made a new system called System 001-B that has a tracking device on it so he can keep track of it, of it when it is out and cleaning the ocean. These are examples of how Boy and Slide are helping create a cleaner ocean. So just remember, when you leave your trash around it, you're causing more and more damage to the ocean. Now back to Paige. Holy moly, I didn't know water pollution was so critical. Yeah, and next time I'll think twice before I throw something away. Now building a bridge to layer with Minecraft. Thanks, Angela. With more than 176 million people playing, Minecraft is one of the most popular games. But with the new keys and Clift update 1.17, Minecraft might be a better game. Minecraft 1.17 is supposed to come out mid 2021. Created by Mojang, Minecraft was released in 2009. Here's some fun facts I found. The first version of Minecraft was created in just six days. Minecraft was inspired by several other games, and every once in a while, the game gets its own name wrong. Minecraft 1.17 will come out mid 2021. The new, blue, new blocks include amethyst buds, amethyst clusters, azelia, azelia leaves, block of amethyst, block of copper, blood and amethyst, calciate candles, cave vines, cobble deep slate, copper ore, co copper deep slate, deep slate ore, drip leaf, dripstone, and skulk sensors. Some new features are the yellow absorption hearts now say yellow if the player has poison or wither effect instead of appearing empty. And glowberries are now required for a balanced diet. Minecraft players play the game because the Minecraft players are given a game after they explore their mine blocks and build with the blocks they mine. Minecraft players play the game because the game is fun and stressful because of the game mode hardcore. It's a mode that you only get one life and if you die you're dead. Plus all the mobs are stronger than in other game modes. Minecraft, so what do you think is of the gameplay? Is it good or bad? So Minecraft 1.17 sounds for fun, right? Because of all the new ores and features. What do you think? Now building back to Angela. Wow, I knew Minecraft was interesting, but not that interesting. I know. I'm really excited about the new Minecraft update. Now banking with Angela with money savings. Thanks, Paige. Money is something that some people don't have much of. Kids barely have any money, but they can earn it, so why not save it? Kids and adults both need to save money because they need to be able to afford food, clothing, housing, and something for themselves. Why is saving money important? It's important because you need to be you need money to afford things, and if you spend and save your money wisely, you will be able to save tons of cash. But if you don't spend wisely, you'll lose more money than saving money. What is saving money, you ask? Saving money is where you gather up your money and put it into a savings bank. What about spending money and where to spend it? First thing and most obvious thing is don't spend it all at once or in one store. Instead, spend it in a store that has what you need and food. What do you, when do you spend it? Spend your money during the holidays or somebody's birthday or when you want to reward yourself. How should you save money? First, you set a goal for how much money you want to er save. Second, spend a few days not spending money, but collecting money. Finally, you can put your money into a savings plan until you've reached your goal. Why is, saving, why is it important to save money? It's important to save money because you need money to pay bills and afford college. What happens if you don't save money? If you spend instead of save, there can be some awful consequences. One of the consequences is losing your home because you can't afford to pay bills. And and an another consequence is you can't afford insurance or college. So now you know saving money is important and how to save money and what happens when you don't save money. Now back to you, Paige. I didn't know there was so much into saving money. Now racing to Jacob with motocross. Thanks, Paige. Did you know that motocross started in Europe in the 1900s? Motocross arrived the United States from Europe in 1960s. It was brought to the United States by Edison Dye, who is known as the father of American motocross. In, the 19, in 1966, the first motocross competition came to Orange County, California. 
Motocross racing is a very competitive sport that takes skill to race dirt bikes on dirt bike tracks with jumps, bumps, and steep inclines. Training is available in motocross schools to teach the basics and safety requirements because racing can put a lot of stress on your body. Strength training is especially important for riders to keep fit and strong. The most popular motocross track is in Red Bud MX Michigan, but the United States has over a thousand tracks. In each race, there are 25 to 30 racers with 25 points awarded to the first place finisher. After four months of racing, the points are tallied to determine the winner of the race. The average per professional United States motocross racer makes 85000 and they can make more through promotional activity. This sounds like a lot of fun to me. Back to you, Paige. That's amazing. I didn't know motocross is bike racing all around the world. Yeah, now dribbling to Brody with Kobe Bryant. Thank you, Angela. Did you know that one of the most famous basketball players was Kobe Bryant? Kobe was born on August 23, 1978 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His father was a former basketball player for the Philadelphia 76ers and trained Kobe from the age of three to be a basketball player. As a high school freshman, Kobe earned a spot on the varsity team and played all five positions. In his junior year, he was named Pennsylvania Player of the Year and was recruited by colleges such as Duke, Michigan, North Carolina, and Villanova. Kobe de decided to become a professional basketball player at, and he was drafted right out of high school by the Charlotte Hornets but was immediately traded to the Lakers as the youngest basketball youngest player ever drafted in NBA history. Kobe won three championships, had two NBA titles, and two Olympic gold medals. Kobe died in a disaster flying, devastating helicopter crash on January 26, 2020 in Calipasi, California. Kobe was in the helicopter going to his daughter's game. There were four, there were four other people on the helicopter with Kobe and his daughter. It was a tragic day for the Lakers, Lakers fans and basketball fans all across the world. Lakers fans miss Kobe because how important he was to the organization. Now back to you, Angela. Awesome. I didn't know Kobe Bryant's life was so interesting. Now hopping to Page with Frogs. Thanks, Angela. Have you ever wondered how those sticky little frogs survive? Well, frogs live all around the world, even in the desert. For example, the spadefoot toad, Syrian Sur desert toad, leopard frogs, and Great Basin spadefoot. These toads and frogs can live from 10 to 20 years, only eating bugs, spiders, and lizards. So far, frogs have survived for millions of years. But how, you may ask? Well, our sticky little friends are a certain color to blend in or to warn the predator that they're poisonous. For example, the poison dart frog. The poison dart frog can be black with red, yellow, green, blue, or orange to scare and warn the predator. And the frogs that blend in, for example, the Australian white tree frog. The white tree frog is most likely four inches or smaller and is much smaller than the leaves. They're green with some little specks that are white and gray. To predators, they're just like any other lump in the leaves. Frogs' bodies are built completely different from each other to, w to make them an able predator. For example, the white tree frog. The white tree frog, after it's out of its egg and its hat postage, is thin and small. But when it's older, its body is rounded and has fat and odd places. To sum it up, frogs live all around the world. They're great hunters, and their bodies are built completely different from each other. Thanks for listening. Now back to you, Angela. I didn't know those little croakers were so interesting. That's it for now. Thanks for watching WLES. And I'm Colton, and we're WNGL News. Today we have six incredible stories today by Tess, Mason, Demia, Maddie, then Colton and Gavin. First, we will start off with Tess and John F. Kennedy. Thanks, Colton. Do you know the facts of John F. Kennedy? 
John F. Kennedy was a World War II hero who saved his crewmates from a shipwreck in the Pacific Ocean. He was the very first Catholic president and the youngest president ever elected. I'm going to be telling you all the interesting facts about John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy was a World War II hero. When he was in the Navy, one day he was on a ship in the Pacific Ocean when there was an explosion. But John saved his crewmates. He told them to swim to the island nearby, away from the boat fire. One of his crewmates was badly burned and was going to die without any help. But John was determined to save all of his men, so he took the strap of his life jacket and pulled him to land where he could get help from the islanders. John F. Kennedy was the first Catholic president. The youngest, the president before him, were not Catholic, but that doesn't make them better presidents. JFK was a very great president, one of the best. Many people had a better life with him leading their country. John F. Kennedy was the youngest president ever elected. Many people were shocked at his age when he was campaigning. They didn't know if they wanted someone so young running their country. Would you? These are all the facts about John F. Kennedy. Back to you, Colton. He was the youngest president to be elected? Secondly, we will turn it over to Mason and the in interesting facts about Rubik's Cubes. Thanks, Gavin. Who invented the Rubik's Cube? Aaron Rubik invented the Rubik's Cube in 1974. He was a Hungarian architect. He was trying to teach his students about free dimensional designs. He came up with a three by three inch rotating cube made out of wood. His creation was a hit with a toy company who wanted to make a plastic version. The original cube that became popular in the 1985s was made up of nine different colored squares arranged in Three by three pattern. The cube can be arranged in 43 quadrillion different ways. It took the creator, Aaron Rubik, one month to solve. Many people became mad because they couldn't solve it. After a few years, it wasn't as popular, but recently it has come back. It has been made into many different shapes and sizes. With this much interest in the cube, speed cubing contests have taken off with many fans. A 17-year-old boy, Max Park, got the world record when he solved the cube, the Rubik's Cube, in 18.42 seconds. Solving a Rubik's Cube can improve muscle memory and improve your brain's mapping skills. Good luck to you solving your Rubik's Cube. Back to you, Gavin. The cube can be arranged in thousands of ways. Colton, have you ever used the Rubik's Cube? Yeah, I'm really interested in them. Now on to Demi and cats. Thank you, Colton. Do you know that cats have really lived really long? It's true. They have been around for more than for more than 5,000 years. They just need to be a moment cats turn to honor bus the goddess of cats. Cats have helped, cats have helped people by keeping mice and rats away from crops. Cats are, are remarkably agile. They can walk on a fence, which could, which could be one to 10 centimeters thick. Cats also always land on their feet, even if they fall backwards by turning while they fall to their feet. All cats, all, ca all felines have long tails to help them with their balance. Otherwise, otherwise cats will tumble down fences in other places. Cats can survive in different heights and temperatures. Snow, snow leopards live in tundras, pumas in mountains, and caracals in deserts. All cats are skillful hunters. They have 30 teeth in their mouths. Cats have pads on their feet, which, which help them walk silently to catch prey. Their prey is anything they can defeat. Small cats usually prey on mice, birds, lizards, and fish. Big cats prey on deer, boars, buffalo, zebras, crocodiles, and gazelles. A female cat gives birth gives birth to one to six kittens after two to four months of pregnancy. At birth, the kittens are deep, blind, and helpless. They will open their eyes after one week. While they're small, their mom, their mom feeds, grooms, and protects them. When they are when they're are older, their their mom will teach them how to hunt. When they're when they're big, they will go finding a home and food. 
Years ago, cats were everywhere and there were lots of species. Sadly, people cut, people cut down trees and killed cats for their fur. Now there are not much species left. Most of them are endangered. If we want to save them, we should not kill them and plant trees. Now we're back to Colton. Whoa, that was really interesting. Some of the facts in there I never knew. Yeah, their reflexes are amazing too. Fourthly, we will have Maddie in Vietnam. Thanks, Gavin. Vietnam is a country located in Southeast Asia. It shares its land borders with China to the north, Laos, and Cambodia to the west. Their language is called Vietnamese and has lots of Chinese uh, characters and some French since it was spoken in the colonial period. Vietnam's first war was in 1941. A nationalist uh, liberation movement based on communist ideology was trying to take over France along with Vietnam. Following the military defeat of Japan in August 1945, there was lots of rioting. The Vietnam War first started in 1957. A guerrilla force in South Vietnam was trying to overthrow Diem's government. Then in 1960, the force organized the National Liberation of South Vietnam. Even though there was economic and military support from the United States, Diem's government was eventually overthrown by their by their own military in 1963. For more than a year, many organizations and groups tried to create a stable and effective government, but they all failed. In 1964, U.S. warships in the Gulf of Tonkin had gotten attacked, and the United States uh, fought back uh, by bombing bases in North Vietnam. In 1967, a new government was finally created, and Ngu Yu Van Thieu was elected president. Eventually, uh, Paris held the first negotiations to end the war. The U.S. began to back down in 1969, and South Vietnam took over most of it. The war finally ended in 1975. In 1975, North Vietnam launched an immense attack against South Vietnam. South of Vietnam's government eventually surrendered, and the South and North came together with a communist government. Vietnam relied heavily on the Soviet Union in rebuilding their economy until the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991. The U.S. then put a trade restriction on Vietnam for 19 years, and it was lifted in 1994. Soon after, Vietnam's econ economy rose up because the tourism was growing more popular in Vietnam. A trade with Vietnam and the United States went into action, which further boosted the economy in 2001. Currently, Vietnam and the U.S. are allies in North North and South Vietnam are still united. Back to you, Gavin. Whoa, that was a long war. Oh my goodness. From 1975 to 1975? Jeez. Now we will fight our way around the world with Colton in World War II. Thank you, Gavin. If you always, order, always wondered about World War II and struggled to find info, I can help you with that. The war started in 1939 and ended in 1945. It was the most destructive and deadliest war ever. The death count was about 17 million for soldiers, and twice as many civilians died. The countries in the war were Germany, Japan, Italy, the U.S., France, Britain, and then China and Russia. The fighting was in Europe, North Africa, Asia, and the islands of the Pacific Ocean. Do you know what started the war? I bet you don't. That's okay, because I can tell you. Germany and a man named Adolf Hitler were mad because they lost World War I. He invaded Poland from the east, and then the U.K. and France declared war on them. Also, countries want a power, like the Axis powers, Germany, Japan, and Italy. The part I think is the most interesting is the fighting. Most of it was in Europe, North Africa, Asia, and the islands of the Pacific Ocean. On September 1st, 1939, Germany and the Luftwaffe invaded Poland and quickly destroyed Polish air forces and Poland itself by bombing cities, buildings, railroads, bridges, and communication lines. D-Day was the worst of all. At least 4,000 to 9,000 German troops died, and at least 10,000 Allies died, but only 4,414 were confirmed on that terrible day in Normandy, France. After Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, the U.S. joined the war. Then President Truman dropped two very powerful, powerful bombs on Japan. They were named the atomic bombs. The bomb killed hundreds of thousands of people. In 1941, Hitler turned against the USSR, and several million Soviets were captured, but soon Hitler got stopped at the gates of Moscow, the capital of Russia, by bad weather and Soviet reinforcements. There's a handful of information on World War II. Hope you like listening to my story. Now back to you, Gavin. That was such a terrible war. Awfully terrible. Awfully terrible. Lastly, we'll rock our way to Gavin and Michael Jackson. Thank you, Colton. 
Hi, I'm Gavin, and I'm going to share some incredible facts with you today on Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson was a famous singer, songwriter, and performer. He was one of the world's most influential and popular artists. He was also known as the King of Pop. Michael Jackson was born August 29, 1958 in Gary, Indiana. He was one of ten children. One ten children, Michael became a singer at the age of five when his brother formed the Jackson Five and was the lead singer at the age of eight. The Jackson Five became very popular in the late 1960s. This is important background information. Michael Jackson was known for many interesting things. He wore a single shining glove, which was a fashion statement. Michael Jackson didn't invent the famous dance move, the moonwalk, but he sure did perfect that signature move and made it internationally known during the bad tour. His moves were breathtaking and sometimes unexpected. I was really surprised when I found out Michael didn't create the moonwalk. In 1988, Jackson was again nominated for key Grammy Awards, including Album of the Year, but he was up against some stiff competition. He would win no Grammys that year. Observers thought that the reign of the King of Pop was over in the Rolling Past and the Rolling Stone. A reader's poll placed Jackson first of the six worst music artists of the year. He never really regained any monument or imitation after the negative reaction to the bad tour. Unfortunately, Jackson developed poor health and back pain. Then he came addicted to the medication and pills. Michael Jackson died on June 25, 2009 at the age of 50 from an overdose in his bathroom. I truly think this was a tragic event for the whole world. Back to you, Colton. That Anyways, is- hope you all enjoyed yourselves. And that is all today on WNGL News.